This book is called Blizzard, and it's by John Rocco. And this I read last year to a couple of your classes, so you might remember it, but I really enjoy this book, and I wanted to read it again. The first flake fell right before recess. It was followed by many, many more. You can see the board says Monday. The wind whipped up and school closed early. Yay! By the time my sister and I got home, the snow was already over our boots. The snow continued to fall through the night and I thought it would never stop. Look how high that snow must be to be up to the stop sign. The next morning, the snowdrifts were so high, we couldn't open our front door. It says Tuesday. So we went out through the window instead. We laughed as we sank deep into the frozen powder. But walking was hard. It was like trying to move through white quicksand. Every few steps, I had to stop and rest. It was even too deep for our sled. We need sled dogs. When we went back inside, we were cold and wet and tired. The mom says, welcome back, explorers. We made camp by the wood stove and our feet tingled as we sipped hot cocoa made with milk. On the third day, dad shoveled the driveway so he could get the car out when the snow plows came. We dug tunnels and secret rooms under the snow. An igloo can keep you warm in sub-zero temperatures. What's an igloo? Look how fun that looks in there. By day four, the plows still hadn't come. I wondered if we'd ever see grass again. Thursday. Inside, things got so tense. Things got tense as our food started to run out. I knew we couldn't survive much longer on cocoa made with water. We need to get to the store, but the roads aren't plowed and we certainly can't walk through this. On day five, I realized it was up to me to take action. I was the only one who had memorized the survival guide. I was the only one who knew what equipment was required. And look, he improvises and engineers snowshoes out of tennis rackets. I was the only one light enough to walk on top of the snow. On day six, I made a list. Saturday, milk, bread, eggs, candy bar. I prepared the sled, then I set off. My usual landmarks were covered by snowdrifts, but I managed to check in with my neighbors on the long journey. Candles, please. Cat food. Coffee. Peanut butter. Okay. And I like this page because it folds out. I'll show this side first. So this is all the places he went around town. He says, checked in on the neighbors. Helped build, build a snowman. Climbed a lookout. Look out, went the wrong way. Made a snow angel. And finally over here, he says, joined a snowball fight. I made it. He was going to Bill's Market. At last I reached the store. I was tired, hungry, and chilled to the bone, but I couldn't think about myself. I was on a mission. Are you going to carry this all by yourself? Yes, sir. I've got my sled. And she's on the phone and he says, yes, he's on his way back now. Who do you think she's talking to? On the return trip, I raced to drop off the groceries before the sun went down. Wow! Grateful smiles and cheers gave me the energy I needed to make it back home. Meow. And like he's walking, walking. Woof! That night, we all had hot cocoa made with milk and it never tasted better. But there was something else we still needed. And like he's telling his family the story, he says it was a perilous journey. Snow plows. It looked as though we would see civilization again after all. Guess we'll have to go back to school tomorrow. Boo. 
Thank heaven. I was going stir crazy. We had survived the blizzard. And this says the blizzard of 78. On Monday, February 6th, 1978, New England experienced one of the biggest snowstorms in its history. It snowed for two days, and by the time it stopped, parts of Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Connecticut were buried under 40 inches of snow. That's four times the height of this book. The wind was blowing up to 50 miles an hour and created snow drifts up to 15 feet high. Where I grew up in Rhode Island, it took over a week for snowplows to get to our street. This book is based on my experience as a 10-year-old boy in that blizzard and how I got to this store over a mile from my house with tennis rackets tied to my feet. And it is for Alea, who always wants to hear stories when I was little. The end. And that book is called Blizzard by John Rocco. And I like that book because he reminds me of an innovation kid because he's brave and kind and thinks about others. And also he's an engineer of how he strapped the tennis rackets to his feet. So I hope you enjoyed that.